What's your life like? What's my life like? Um, well, I just left the Mormon church. I have um, like OCD, but I didn't realize how um, serious it was, I guess. When most people might say, oh, I should have prayed, but like life goes on. Someone with scrupulosity mm. might get hung up on that and it can really like ruin your day, your week, your month, your year, so on and so forth. Call from Ethan. Ethan. Hey. Ethan, you sound like your like phone has a ta has like an infectious disease, and you're standing six feet away from it. Wait, really? Oh, hold up. I got some headphones on. Let me let me switch you around real quick here, Gek. How's that? Um, it's better. It's better? Yes. It is better. That's good. Good. I'm glad. You're glad? Yeah. Um, what's your life like? What's my life like? Um, well, I just left the Mormon church. Um, you left what? I work church? in a hospital. I left the Mormon church. Oh, why? Um, well, I grew up in it, um, and I served, you, you ever seen those little missionaries on the old bikes? I did one of those. How was that? It was good. Um, traumatizing. It was... Why was it traumatizing? Because I learned a lot about myself, and that's never fun but but productive that's why i say it was good but traumatizing I, traumatizing yeah, is the wrong i think learning word. stuff about yourself is, is very productive yeah i don't think i'd use the word traumatizing i think maybe just um shocking i don't know do you want to share what you what you learned about yourself yeah sure it's a little uh yeah um basically Okay, this is actually really unique. I have, well, I don't know how unique it is. I don't know. Maybe a lot of people have this and just don't realize it. I have, um, like, OCD, but I didn't realize how um, serious it was, I guess. And I have a kind of OCD called scrupulosity. You can, like, actually Google it. It's a real thing. It sounds made up. I promise it's not. Is that related to the term scrupulous? Yes, and what it means scrupulosity means that you have OCD about religious things. I'm not shitting you. So here I was serving a mission and this like deep rooted spiritual OCD was like, like, yeah. So, so does, that, does that make more sense why I answered that way? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious. What is, could you explain screw, sc how do you say it? Scrupulous? Yeah. Yeah. Could you explain that? What, is, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, let's say, let's say, I don't know. I'm trying to think of something that relates to everybody. Let's say you are taught to pray when you grow up. I think a lot of people at some point, not everybody, but a lot of people were taught it's good to pray mm -hmm. to, to God or whoever. And let's say you were taught to pray and you were taught to pray every night. And then one night you were too tired to pray. So you just fell asleep. Scrupulosity, if you have it, you wake up the next morning and feel like like you sinned or you did something wrong or that you're going to be in trouble. When most people might say, oh, I should have prayed, but like life goes on. Someone with scrupulosity mm. might get hung up on that and it can really like ruin your day, your week, your month, your year, so on and so forth. Well, so that makes it like doubly, I mean, that makes it, that must have made it extremely hard for you to quit. Yeah. Yeah, it was, well, actually, I don't know. So it was really unique because, like, on my mission, you have to live by even stricter rules. So, like, most of you who know a Mormon, they, they live pretty strict lifestyles, I would say. Um, but as a missionary, that's, like, multiplied. Like, it's way more strict. You have a lot tighter rules to follow because, you're you know, you're the face of, of a religion. That's who people see, like, out on the streets and whatever. And so... So it was really tough then. It was so it was almost like the more devout I was, the harder it was. Um, 
And then I, I got home from my mission. I kind of learned this about myself, so I was at least aware of it. Before my mission, I honestly didn't even know I struggled a ton with it because I just had never, you know, been challenged to that what, level. Uh, at what point did you find out this term? Scrupulosity. Um, when I got home from my mission, yeah. So, like, on my mission, it became pretty evident that I had OCD and that things weren't quite like clicking like they do for everybody else but um i went to some counseling when i got, got home and that's when like definitions were were put to what i was feeling and i finally like was able to yeah so how did you how did you overcome it to where you could quit because it would because uh, i mean the idea of if the idea of skipping a day is is, yeah, is yeah. you know terrifying what the, how the hell do you you know quit <laughs> altogether that's a good that's a valid question um so I, so I went to counseling when I got home, like I said, and, and the counselor, um, basically if you have OCD, the way you treat it is by challenging your OCD. So let's say I was afraid of germs, you'd eat without washing your hands and you just do it to the point where you become desensitized, right? So if your huge That's fear gross. is, yeah, I mean, yeah, Sorry. especially if you have OCD. And if your huge fear is like breaking religious rules, but you have to break them in order to like conquer your OCD. You just kind of start challenging yourself with like smaller things. So like mm. at the time I didn't swear at all. And so that's where I started. Like I would just, and there was times I wanted to swear, but I just wouldn't because I was taught not to. So I would just mm. like occasionally swear. And it was like, honestly, really relieving because I finally was just like expressing how I wanted to express. So that was nice. And then I think from there, I just gradually took smaller and smaller steps. I got married pretty quick um like most mormons do but my my wife has actually been a huge help because she's really open-minded and so we've had a lot of conversations and i really to simplify the story to it boiled down to me one day i said what makes my beliefs the only true beliefs There's a lot of people out there with good beliefs good people and i was just raised to believe that what i believed was the only truth and I guess one day I just it just clicked for me that that's just silly to assume that I'm one of the only few fortunate ones who actually knows the truth. And, everyone, and so I decided mm -hmm. that I was just going to try to live differently. And it's been really nice and relieving. And I've met some amazing people. I like that. It must be. I mean, I mean, holding that idea that you are the only one that knows the truth and you have the only real truth. That must be very isolating. It, it is in a way. And it's also something that I've learned really quickly is it's a big at least at least for me i feel like it's you don't have to have a lot of accountability for your actions Ooh. because because you're fucking right dude yeah a you're fucking right and b like if you do something that not everybody agrees with like yeah like it's well the church told me to i'm supposed yeah. to i'm doing the right thing you, yeah, you yeah. just kind of and so i've in this so it's been about a month um, since I've like kind of ventured out, I drank for the cool. first time. I smoked, I smoked a little weed for the first time, and I feel like I've learned two two big lessons. One, you got to be accountable for your own actions, and two, you got to have a strong sense of morals. Like, regardless of what you believe in, you just have to like got to choose what you want out of life. And if you want to be a good person, or if you want to be a shitty person, and then you got to hold yourself to it regardless of what any institution wants you to do so it's been really i think it's been a really like positive thing for me. i love that yeah you're, you're you, i mean you really sounds like you broke the chains yeah it's it's been nice i haven't told in fact um this audience of however many uh twitch viewers you got right now is is some of the first people to actually know about this my parents don't yeah. know my closest friends don't really know just because I don't know how to tell them. So if anyone's got advice, shoot it my way because I have no idea what to. Are your closest to... friends? Uh, are your closest friends also in the Mormon or in the church? Yeah, yeah, almost all of them. Yep. Interesting. What do you? How, what do you think they would? How do you think they would respond? My best buddy, I talked to him, and I, I was. He's one of the few that I actually have. I haven't told him, you know, like, oh, I did this and I did this, but I told him. I think I'm going to take a step away and kind of like figure myself out. And he took it really well. And we still talk every day. I mean, we're best buddies. It's not like he, you know, like ostracized me or something for it. But his gut reaction was, well, read the Book of Mormon again. Like pray again. Like 
you're only going to know if it's true if you do those things. And for me, I just I didn't I didn't want to drink the Kool Aid anymore. Like, yeah, if you do that stuff every day, you'll probably feel like it's true because you're doing it every day. You know, I don't know. So I see where he was coming from, but I'm just glad that he's still a good friend and he's supportive. But and how about the parents? They don't know a thing. I'm terrified. <laughs> I was that's that was my next question. I wanted to are you are you scared for these people to know these things? Um I don't think I'm scared of how they're gonna react. I think they'll react fine. My parents are good at listening. Um but I do think hmm. I guess I'm just worried that they'll view me differently or that they'll think I'm just an innately bad person or that they'll be like nervous around me or something because I live a different lifestyle than them. So you're not like you're not like directly afraid that they'll be mad at you or disown you or something like Uh uh-uh. No, I got really yeah, I got really fortunate with parents. They 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 seem to handle things yeah in a pretty good way. I'm just more worried about like just kind of a natural division and like is it going to be weird visiting them now? And are they going to feel like they can't connect with me because I go out and drink on the weekend and they go to church? You know, like, I don't know. Is it going to be, I don't know. Well, man, look, either way, I'm, uh, I'm personally, I'm proud of you for, for, for not drinking the Kool-Aid because God, because God damn it, you get one life, you got one go around. <laughs> and, Why, uh, you know, d- 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 live it on your own terms, not some fucking, you know, book. I appreciate that, Mr. Gick. That's for sure, man. For sure. Um, listen, dude. Good luck to you as you, um, you know, you know. Let everyone know if you choose to let everyone know, man. I'm, uh, I'm rooting yeah, for you. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's been, it's been a journey, and and it's, uh, you know, I feel like my fantasies are a little skewed right now. I don't really know. Uh, kind of figure myself out. So it's exciting. I feel like I have did a lot I ask of options. Did I ask you your fantasy yet, or did or did we not get there? You know, not really, but it kind of covered it. I mean, basically, what I was what I was gonna ask you about was just, I uh, I feel I I do feel a little weird just because that's been my whole identity for so long, and it's not just that, but I've also left a, a lot of other big parts of my life behind recently, and I just feel almost like I don't know, like I'm having a quarter life crisis. Not in a bad way. Like I'm not doing anything irrational but i just kind of mm-hmm. don't know who i am right now i'm kind of refiguring it out and it's it's fun and exciting but it's also like kind of fucking stressful yeah i understand it's stressful but I, I i it's totally fun and exciting right because you know it's a it's a total exciting stage of growth for you even though it's it's scary you know it's like yeah. um uh, what one thing that might help a little bit like Whenever I get nervous for something, if I feel nervous, I always, I try to think like, oh, I'm so grateful that I'm nervous because that means that something, I mm. mean, I care, something is exciting enough in my life to make me nervous, right? Because we cause don't sure, get like, all the time, this growth, yeah. this growth period, it might be stressful, but like you wouldn't be stressed at all if you were still, I guess you would because of the thing, but like, <laughs> right, you, right. You, you got to know, like, you'd rather have the stress that comes from, um, you know, discovering who you are than, you know, the the stress that you had uh, sort of living um, by the book. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. It's a high risk, high reward kind of idea, I guess. You take more risks in your life and you find more reward, I guess. So it's been good. Awesome, man. What's what's the... All right, so you drank, you smoked, you killed a hooker. What's next? <laughs> Oh shit. Um I don't know. I don't know. I just yeah, I don't know. Those, 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 those are the two big ones I wanted to try. I just never, you know, I'd heard about them my whole life. I'd never drank, never smoked and so I don't know, just living now, just figuring it out, trying to figure out I I this is a random side note and I'm sure if you want to get on to someone else, but uh I, I also, I ran track my whole life. I even ran in college and I just quit the team to take a, a good job opportunity, which was one of the best decisions I've ever made. But Fuck because yeah. of that, like, I just, there's just been so many, like, so many of these, like, you know, I'm done. I'm moving on, which has been really liberating. But again, like, just kind of figuring life out. So I don't know. The drinking and smoking was a fun start. And I think, you know, I don't, I don't want that to, like, run my life now. But 
I think I'll just kind of try to figure it out, find more fun stuff to do and some new hobbies and new direction in life. And should be good. Fuck yeah, man. Well, like I said, I'm proud of you for uh, going out there and making the making the effort to live your own life, even if it gets tough. Appreciate it, Gek. You have a good night. Thanks, you man. You too, man. You take care. Later.